Okay, here's that screw that I made with the thread attachment for the uh, watchmaker's lathe in the last video. Today we're going to uh, polish it up and, uh, and harden it and get it ready to, the first thing we're going to do is work on the threads. We'll put it in the collet. Now we'll be able to work on the threads. But before we do anything with the threads, let's take a look at that little screw there. That's from a Waltham 1883 size 18 pocket watch. That's the normal type of size of screw that you'd be working on with this equipment. And the one I'm working on there is for a skeleton clock. Quite a bit bigger than what it normally gets used in this equipment. There's the little holder that you use to hold the uh, pocket watch screw in it. You know, we're lucky the other one fits into a uh, collet. It's big, but it will allow me to take pictures and show you how it all goes together. Then you use this rod here, and that rod will hold that screw into position in the holder. And we and now we can work on the threads if we needed to. Just a FYI to show you what this is, uh, what it what it normally does. All right, let's take a look at the lapping compounds. This first one is a uh, lapping compound, a 220 grit lapping compound I've just started experimenting with. Uh, I kind of like it so far. I haven't used any of the other grades. There's the 220. This is the one that I'm using right now. I bought a couple other grades here yet. I haven't done any experimenting with them yet, but so far this is looking pretty good. Uh, it's a nice, uh, uh, the roughest of the, all the co lapping compounds that I use. I use it to flatten out the end of the screw. And uh, I mix a little oil on it so if it gets a little thick. The number two, this is Dimatine. And I mix Dimatine with a little bit of oil. And uh, uh, that's the one that actually does the polishing. It's the extra fine Dimatine. That brings out the nice finish. And then this is another one that I've been experimenting with. It's a 0.5 micron uh, uh, paste, uh, and that one brings out the final shine that you want to get when you're all, when you're all done. And so uh, uh, let's go ahead over to the lathe. I want to show you how I'm going to get started on this. All right, there's the uh, screw mounted in there. We're using that 220 grit. We'll force it into the grooves with this uh, stick and uh, I'll do it all by hand and uh, hand wind it and we'll just move it in there just to clean out those grooves as clean as we can get them uh, before we get over there to uh, uh, work on the top of the screw. There we go. There, that'll finish it up. Now, uh, let's take a look at this the head of the screw we're going to start polishing that and I made this little collet out of brass it's got I use a slitting saw it's got three slits in it but it slides in nicely over the threads and just a light screwing in of the thread of the uh, screw here and that the brass will protect the threads from the holder okay and this is the holder it's got a number a six millimeter collet in the end here so you put it in the collet hold it and down the end you tighten it up now it's being held parallel uh, so we're ready now to work on the on the on the front face of the screw we'll take it over to the lathe in a minute and use that 220 grit and flatten out that face but before we go uh, just for another FYI here's the normal collet that you'd be using and uh, We'll grab that little uh, watch screw there and put it in there and show you what it's... This is normally what you're polishing with this tool. Just a little screw like this. Actually, this is one of the bigger screws. Well, let me get in that column and show you. There you go. And then it slides right in that six millimeter uh, column as well. And then you're ready to start polishing. Alright, here we are at the lathe. This is a shop made holder that I made to uh, hold the, uh, uh, hold the uh, larger screws up to the lathe and, and lap them uh, with the power of the lathe uh, on the, with the iron, uh, the, that's an iron lap I got in there. It's charged with that 220 and we're going to uh, uh, bring it down to uh, flat. And it, it just on the bigger screws like this, uh, it works much better uh, with the lathe. Yeah, see, there you go. That's It's all flattened out now. Doing that by hand with a big screw like that felt quite difficult. 
Uh, the little screws, not so much, but that big screw, yeah, it's best to get it flat. So now we've got the bell metal in there, and the bell metal is, uh, I think it's 77% uh, uh, bronze and 23% tin or something, but it's a very good lapping uh, surface uh, for finishing off the screws. And we're holding it in a, in a lathe, I mean in a vise, and we're doing it by hand. I'm just using one finger here so that you can see. Uh, let me see if I can get in a better position here. There we go, now, there we go. Now this is pretty much how you do it. And uh, it'll polish itself up. And then we'll move it over and we'll go to uh, the box wood. Now we're not only gonna do the face, but we're gonna do the sides of the screw. There's a roller there and I've got this uh, 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 burnishing bar that I use and I'm using the uh, polish on the side there and I'm just polishing the sides and uh, get that nice and flat but that uh, roller keeps everything square it's very important to be square alright there you go there's your final polish with the Dimatine and I've got the uh, boxwood lap up there looks like there's a lot on there but that's really not a lot of paste on there uh, I guess it's the lights that are doing that uh, and we'll go over it really uh, uh, and put our final polish on with that. Um, <clears throat> load it up here. And same basic moves. It just really puts that mirror finish on that, you, you, that you're looking for. There we go. Alright. So now I throw it in these things. I've been throwing it in between each one of these. You got to clean it up between the different grits, get it nice and clean. But this is the final cleaning before we go down and harden the screw. So I'm doing using lighter fluid and it cleans up pretty quickly. Okay, I've covered it with uh, boric acid and alcohol. Uh, <coughs> and I'm using map gas here to heat it up. I only have a single uh, turn around on that wire holding it. Uh, it hardens better for me when I do it this way. And so uh, we're now we're just waiting for it to turn cherry. And uh, then I've got a little glass of water off to the side and I'll quench it in that water. And then you can see how well that uh, boric acid and alcohol does to keep the uh, scale from forming on the screw itself. It's getting up there now, it's starting to turn red. There we go, that's looking pretty good. All right, let's take it over and quench it. All right, so uh, there you go. You can see it now, that's pretty much what it looks like after it's been quenched. And there's the look at it after it got out of there. Uh, that boric acid did a good job of keeping it clean. All right, we'll clean these out real quick. We're not going to bother facing it again. We're going to we're not going to use the iron lap. We're going to go straight to the uh, uh, bell metal lap. Here we go. We'll put that final uh, polish on there. This will take a little bit of time. Oh, there we go. It's cleaning up nicely. We'll also get inside that slot there with a piece of uh, wood as well. There we go. Now we're on the wooden lap and the last of that uh, 0.5 micron uh, paste for that final mirror finish. Once again, we will go over the, uh, the thread in there as well. Uh, it's a few minutes just turning it by hand. All right, there's our final wash in the lighter fluid. And uh, that screw won't be touched by my hands anymore once this, uh, uh, this bath is over because it's ready now to go onto the bluing tray. All right, so there's the alcohol lamp in my bluing tray. You'll notice that I took that bluing tray over to my uh, uh, wire wheel and I really uh, uh, buffed it up nicely. Uh, to see the change of the blue in the screw is uh, rather difficult for me if, it's, uh, if the uh, brass is dark. So I, uh, I brighten it up quite a bit with a uh, wire brush. And uh, I've doubled up the speed here. So it took about four minutes and 20 seconds 
to uh, do this big screw uh, all the way from beginning to end. But I've speeded it up here to uh, just give you an idea. Now you move it around so that you're not just getting the end of the screw hot. You got to get the plate hot as well so that everything heats up kind of evenly. And you want to do it slowly. You don't want to do anything. You don't want anything done fast. This is the slow part. And it's going to slowly change colors there. You can see it now. It's starting to turn a little blue on me now. Now you got to watch it really close to get the color that you want. And I'm getting pretty close to that now. You see that glass of water off to the back there. That's where that screw is going to go when it gets to that color to stop the tempering. There we go. It's going in there now. All right, there's the finished product there. You get a good look at it. Come in, it came out nice. Now let's talk a little bit about the future. I got an upcoming video here using uh, these tools from Robert Porter's book. Uh, I built them from his book for a shoreline lathe. And I'm going to make a, uh, a cutter like that uh, for a clock gear. And uh, I've done quite a few of them. And I think you'll get a kick out of seeing a clock gear made. But thanks a lot uh, for watching and I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you next time.